ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the 53,000 members of the Airline Pilots Association International, welcome to the 58th Air Safety Forum. Before I begin my remarks, I'd like to direct your attention to the screens for a special video presentation. For those of us who are professional pilots, everything matters when it comes to the safe transportation of our passengers and cargo. That includes weather conditions, load factors, the condition of the aircraft, flight schedules, and so much more. For the Airline Pilots Association International, everything matters when it comes to advancing aviation safety. For ALPA, it's not just a job, it's a moral imperative. The ALPA pilots and staff who work in our air safety organizations, safety, security, and pilot assistance areas, and with the other ALPA committees related to those areas, are dedicated to carrying out this mission. And as you saw in this video, our association is involved in every facet of aviation safety. The International Air Transport Association recently reported that last year's accident rate was the lowest in aviation history. According to IATA, the 2011 global accident rate was the equivalent of one accident every 2.7 million flights. This represents a 39%, a 39% drop compared to 2010, when the previous mark was set. I'm proud to say that in the past year, we have accomplished a great deal in the areas of safety, in the areas of security, and in pilot assistance. And now I'd like to highlight some of our most significant achievements. So we'll start with known crew member, which is an enhanced, and I stress enhanced, screening process for U.S. airline pilots and flight attendants. The success of the initiative, which is due in large part to the coordination 
of airlines, government, and ALPA can be measured in the following statistics. More than 3,500 screenings take place each day utilizing the program. Known crew member has facilitated more than 500,000 pilot entries through security since August 2011 when the program was launched. Known crew member sites are now operational at 18 U.S. airports with 31 total airports expected by the end of the year. Flight crew members at 28 U.S. airlines now have access to this enhanced screening process. Another issue at the top of ALPA's agenda in both the United States and Canada is pilot fatigue. For decades, we've advocated for updated, science-based pilot fatigue rules. As a result, I'm pleased to report that new regulations for pilot flight and duty time and rest requirements in the United States were released in December. FAR 117 will implement much needed and long awaited safety improvements over the next two years. But as you know, the rule excludes all cargo airlines from mandatory compliance, and this is absolutely unacceptable. So ALPA has redoubled our efforts to promote one level of safety for all, and I repeat, all airline operations. To that end, ALPA has launched an intensive campaign focused on the critical importance of protecting all airline pilots equally against fatigue. And to date, ALPA pilot advocates and staff have made more than 400 visits to congressional offices as part of this effort. In addition, our members have sent more than 2,600 messages to their elected representatives in strong support of the Safe Skies Act of 2012. This legislation was introduced with bipartisan support in both the Houses of Congress earlier this year. The Safe Skies Act achieves one level of safety by ensuring that all pilots are protected by science-based rest requirements, regardless of whether they fly passengers or cargo. If enacted, the bill would direct the U.S. Department of Transportation to apply the Federal Aviation Administration's new regulations to all cargo operations in the same way they currently apply the passenger operations. At this time, I'd like to thank U.S. Representatives Chip Cravat and Tim Bishop and Senators Barbara Boxer and Olympia Snow for their commitment to aviation safety and leadership in introducing and moving this important legislation forward. Now, up in Canada, the Transport Canada Fatigue Management Working Group completed its work late last year. The group, which is co-chaired by Alpha Canada Board President Captain Dan Adamus, was charged with evaluating current Canadian flight and duty time rules and developing recommendations for change. Since August 2010, they met on a monthly ba basis until their final meeting in December 2011. The co-chairs have submitted their report using the working group's recommendations and it will be on the agenda at the CARAC Technical Committee meeting scheduled for this October. Then, Transport Canada will take the report along with public comments and review them for regulatory consideration. Now, you have my word. The Airline Pilots Association International is and will continue to be fully engaged to advance one level of safety for all types of flight operations across the airline industry and in the U.S. and Canada. The success of programs like Known Crew Member underscores the effectiveness of utilizing a risk-based approach to aviation safety and security. ALPA continues to advocate for adoption of this approach because it will help enhance aviation security, making air transportation more customer-friendly, 
for airline transportation, uh, more customer friendly for airline passengers and air cargo shippers, and ensure the U.S. airline industry continues to fuel the nation's economy and provide jobs. In the U.S., ALPA has worked closely with the FAA over the years to promote the highest levels of safety for our air transportation system. Many of our efforts have been tied to the funding of the agency, and I'm happy to report that this year we finally have a long-term reauthorization bill through 2015. This bill was signed into law after 23 extensions. FAA reauthorization advances many of ALPA's priorities, including advancing next-gen initiatives, enhancing runway safety, making laser attacks on an aircraft a federal crime, improving the safety of lithium battery shipments by air, strengthening voluntary aviation safety data protections, studying the feasibility of installing flight deck doors or, or alternatives on all cargo aircraft, and supporting critical aviation safety research. At the Airline Pilots Association, we find that when we work together, we achieve outstanding results. And at ALPA, we are uniquely positioned to bring industry stakeholders together to keep focus on issues critically important to the aviation safety mission. Using the Air Safety Forum as a model, we have held a series of highly successful conferences, each devoted to one specific issue. Last October, ALPA and Airlines for America co-sponsored a conference on the growing problem of laser illumination of aircraft cockpits. In January, we kicked off the new year by organizing and hosting a symposium on aviation safety action programs, the current challenges, the trends in these vitally important voluntary safety reporting programs. In March, ALPA seized the opportunity to galvanize industry efforts to combat pilot fatigue. We held a landmark conference where participants explored the actions necessary to build on these new safety regulations. In April, ALPA hosted a full-day conference in closing the gaps in air cargo safety and security. And last month, ALPA hosted a one-day conference on pilot training, which was sponsored by Rockwell Collins and General Electric. Each of these conference drew, conferences drew a wide range of attendees, from ALPA safety and security representatives and their peers from other labor groups to legislators to representatives of several U.S., Canadian, and European government agencies and airline managements, law enforcement and military officers, news reporters, and academics. The level of interest in these issues underscores the point that when it comes to aviation safety, we are all stakeholders. Now, there are a few new initiatives I'd like to highlight. In April, ALPA submitted comments to the FAA outlining the association's view on the agency's notice of promote, proposed rulemaking on pilot certification and qualification requirements for air carrier operations. ALPA actively participated on the Aviation Rulemaking Committee that developed many of the recommendations contained in this NPRM. In June, the House Subcommittee approved funding for the Human Intervention Motivation Study, or HEMS. This is a highly successful collaboration between the FAA, air carriers, and pilot representatives. And so while we're talking about facts and figures, here's an important one. The long-term success rate under the HEMS program is 85 to 90 percent. And by approving funding for HEMS, the committee enabled this critical health program for, for professional airline pilots to continue to operate 
for another three-year cycle. Also in June, we created the Special ALPA President's Committee for Remote Operations, chaired by First Air Captain Peter Black. Several ALPA carriers conduct this type of operation with their pilots routinely flying in the high Arctic and other remote locations in the far northern, northern areas of Canada and the United States. Earlier this year, we had the opportunity to see some of these pilots in action. They're true professionals in everything they do. They operate in a harsh, unpredictable environment using rough, unpaved runways, making approaches with basic non-precision nav aids. Through the creation of this committee, it's another step towards ALPA's long-standing goal of one level of safety and security for airline operations. The primary focus will be to address the challenges that professional ALPA aviators overcome on a daily basis during operations in the Arctic and similar regions. As you can see, in the years since we last came together, we've accomplished a great deal. But there's always more to do. And the work of ALPA's air safety organization continues on many different fronts. And I'd like to highlight some of the association's strategic priorities going forward. One of our goals is to improve the safety and standards for the carriage of dangerous goods, especially the carriage of lithium batteries. Our position is clear. Lithium batteries represent an unmitigated hazard on our cargo and passenger aircraft and must be regulated. We were able to get the International Civil Aviation Organization to adopt technical instructions, which ALPA is working to elevate to ICAO standards. We also continue to press the Department of Transportation for a PIMSA or an FAA regulation regarding the carriage of lithium batteries. Another key aspect of one level of safety is the safe integration of unmanned aircraft systems, or as they are now being called, remotely piloted aircraft into the national airspace. Our key message here is all aircraft in the airspace where we fly must meet the same safety standards that we currently do, period. It doesn't matter whether the pilot is on a conventional flight deck or sitting in a control station on the ground. High safety, safety standards must be established and they have to apply to everyone in the airspace. ALPA is a member of the Aviation Rulemaking Committee on UAS and on the RTCA Special Committee developing UAS standards and will continue to participate in those groups to advance this goal. As part of our continued advocacy of a risk-based approach to airline and airport security, ALPA will continue to press for action to increase funding for the successful Federal Flight Deck Officer Program. This is a highly cost-efficient program in which airline pilots are fully trained to protect their flight decks as federal law enforcement officers. The FFDO program serves as a key component of a multi-layered approach to aircraft security. We'll continue to work closely with the TSA and the Federal Air Marshal Service, other industry partners, and the U.S. Congress to resolve issues which have an impact on the program's overall integrity. We will also continue to urge action to advance threatened airspace management so that the air transportation system is positioned to swiftly and effectively respond to potential security threats, to end laser attacks on aircraft, to improve the security of all cargo operations by doing more, by doing more to secure the flight deck by installing secondary barriers on aircraft and particularly on cargo aircraft that do not have fortified flight deck doors. By adding full side of protections 
for all domestic airports serving all cargo operations. Incorporating fingerprint-based criminal history checks for all persons with unescorted access to cargo aircraft and the goods they carry. By mandating training for flight crews in the all-cargo common strategy and improving the systems and use of technology for the screening of cargo loaded on all cargo aircraft. We will also continue our partnership with A4A and the TSA to expand the known crew member program to make it available to all U.S. airline pilots and flight attendants. In Canada, ALPA is also a strong supporter of their Restricted Access Identity Card, or RAKE, program, and we urge its continue, continued implementation. ALPA also continues to work our work related to modernizing the international airspace system in which we operate. Many who are involved in the implementation of next-gen initiatives are getting frustrated with the pace of progress. As that frustration grows, it will be important for ALPA to remain the honest broker, ensuring that procedures implemented to increase capacity do not adversely affect safety or pilot workload. In the area of pilot assistance, ALPA is working to ensure that all commercial airlines have professional standards programs. ALPA has participated in an FAA Aviation Rulemaking Committee to address flight crew member professional development and conduct. We expect that the ARC will public advisory and or rulemaking guidance for programs to address these issues. This guidance will serve as a basis for fostering professional standards programs for both U.S. and Canadian airlines. In addition, ALPA recently published a white paper to address the issue of pilot occupational safety and health and highlight the need for a dedicated division within both the FAA and Transport Canada to focus on these issues. This white paper will be used as a basis to approach both agencies to ask for government support of the programs to promote pilot health and safety. Now, when it comes to aviation safety mission, by every measure, we're making real progress. But these statistics don't come out of nothing. They're the result of a collective effort and constructive partnerships with all stakeholders, legislators and regulators, manufacturers and operators, and other employee groups and labor unions. Many of our partners are taking part in the Air Safety Forum this week, and I want to thank you. Our panelists, our sponsors, and our exhibitors for helping make the event such a success and for working with ALPA to advance our mutual goals. <laughs>